So AWS S3 offers its users a wide variety of storage classes and this is probably the most important concept considering the exam but my main aim is to give you as many details as possible. So let's start. So AWS S3 offers a range of storage classes for every storage class is designed in a way that it will help you design your application as per your needs of your storage and how long you want to retain the data or how optimal you want your storage to be and cost effectiveness plays a very important role or a very big role in this so let us learn what are the ways we can plan our storage so amazon s3 offers capabilities to manage your data throughout its life cycle so once an s3 life cycle policy is set your data will automatically transfer to a different storage class without any charges or without any changes to your application. So this is a very big benefit considering how much cost effectiveness you can have or you can bring into your design or the product. So the first thing that we have here is S3 standard that is for general purpose storage for frequently accessed data. So the second one that we have here is S3 intelligent tiering for data with unknown or changing access patterns so the third one that we have here is s3 standard infrequent access or what we call as standard ia and we have standard ia one zone and these are used for long-lived but less frequent access data so the next two that we have here is amazon s3 glacier and amazon s3 glacier deep archive these two are used for basically for long-term archiving so don't worry we will be discussing about the performance and usage comparisons as well so let's begin by discussing each of them one by one. So S3 standard offers high durability and availability and performance object store for uh, frequently accessed data and it delivers low latency and high throughput when it comes to the performance. And uh, the best use cases are basically for cloud applications, dynamic websites, content distribution, mobile and gaming application and big data analytics. So the good thing is a single bucket can contain objects stored across S3 standard, S3 intelligent tiering, S3 standard IA and S3 one zoned IA. And we with the help of the lifecycle policies, we can automatically transition objects between storage classes without any application change. The lifecycle policy actually is a configuration that determines what should happen to an object when it reaches its defined lifespan. So let's suppose the user has stored data in S3 standard and it has lifecycle policy set to 30 days and you have selected the option for it to move to S3 standard IE. Then automatically when it reaches 30 days, it will automatically transition to that storage class. So this is what practically uh, lifecycle policies do. And it is designed for a durability of 99.9999999 percentage of objects across multiple availability zone. And uh, it is designed for 99.99 availability percent availability over a given year. So let's do the math here. Uh, so let's do our maths here with 11 nines. So if you had 10 million objects, okay, there will be only loss of one object every 10,000 years. So that is what is called as 11.9 durability okay it also gives you sl support for data in transit and encryption of data at rest and s3 lifecycle management for automatic migration of objects to other s3 storage classes okay so this is all about s3 standard storage class okay this is a general purpose storage class and uh, you have the faster access actually when you use a standard storage classes so retrieval times are also faster in this one let's discuss s3 intelligent tiering or unknown or changing access okay so this storage class is designed to optimize cost by automatically moving data to the most cost effective access tier without performance impact or operational overhead so the difference with standard storage class is that intelligent tiering stores objects in two storage access tiers okay so one tier that is optimized for frequent access and another lower cost tier that is optimized for infrequent access and it's so good that if an object is an infrequent access tier is accessed it automatically moves back to the frequently access tier and there is no retrieval fees when using the s3 intelligent tier storage class and don't worry there are no additional tiering fees when objects are moved between access tiers okay so what happens is here like let's suppose you have some objects that are not frequently accessed and the lifecycle policy what it can do is it can move those to the second tier which is for the infrequent access and when you try to access one of the objects from the infrequently accessed tiers it will be moved back to the frequently accessed one okay so mostly it is used for long-lived data like dynamic websites whose access patterns are unknown or unpredictable and which actually can be accessed at any point of time so here as well a single bucket can contain objects stored across uh, S3 standard, S3 IA, S3 IT, and S3 one zoned IA. 
and it will automatically transition objects between storage class without any application changes using the lifecycle policy and it is also designed for durability of 11 9 percent of objects across multiple availability zone and it is designed for 99.9 percent .9 availability over a given year it is resilient against events that impact an entire availability zone so you don't have to worry about that and a small monthly monitoring or auto tiering fees is applicable to this one and it supports ssl for data in transit and encryption of data at rest okay so this is all about uh, intelligent tiering let's move on so now we have standard infrequent access so this storage class is used when your data that is uh, infrequently accessed like log records that the user may not want to access frequently so to have an optimal cost you store them in standard ia so as i already mentioned s3 standard ia is for data that is accessed less frequently but requires rapid access when needed it offers high durability high throughput and low latency just like s3 standard with a low per gb storage price and per gb retrieval fees okay and its basic use cases are like if you want a long term storage or you want to create backups of your data or for disaster recovery you can use the storage type and same here as well a single bucket can contain objects across multiple storage classes like s3 standard ia it and one zone ia and it is designed for durability of 11 9 percent of objects across multiple availability zones and designed for 99.9 percent .9 availability over a given year and the other points that i have already mentioned here like it is resilient against events that impact an entire availability zone and supports ssl for data in transit and encryption of data at rest so this is common for most of the storage classes so the one thing that you want to associate a standard infrequent access is basically for the data that you want to store which is less frequently accessed but requires a rapid retrieval time okay so you want a faster retrieval but that is a less frequently accessed data okay so you can use infrequent access so here as well s3 one zone ia is for data that is accessed frequently but requires rapid access when needed and so the difference here with one zone ia is that unlike other s3 storage classes which stores data in minimum of three availability zones s3 one zone ia stores in single availability zone one zone or single availability zone so i hope you get the connection okay so one zone means single availability zone so it will store data in a single availability zone so when it comes to cost it saves you a lot and it is 20 percent less than the standard ia and so if you are fine with not having the availability and resilience of s3 standard or s3 standard ia then s3 one zone ia is a very good option for customers with a very lower cost or very budget constrained people okay for example if you want to store data that you can easily create in the future and you don't mind losing it in rare conditions then you can use this storage class so it is designed for a durability of 11 9 percent of uh, objects in single availability zone and it is designed for 99.5 percent of availability over a given year and because s3 one zone ia stores data in single availability zone data stored in this storage class will be lost in case the availability zone goes down or is no longer available okay so this is the main difference between one zone ia and other storage classes okay so when you talk about one zone ia remember that the data will be stored in one availability zone or a single availability zone and it is a very low cost option for infrequently accessed data and if the availability zone goes down or is no longer available then your data is also gone so use it wisely so i hope it was clear let's move on so s3 glacier is a secure durable and low cost storage class for data archiving so archiving basically refers to the data which you want to store somewhere you actually forget that it actually existed oh no not literally but the idea behind archiving is to preserve it for a longer period and store them for a longer period of time like historical data like hospitals or government data that people generally don't use frequently so what else i can say about it it's like you store them for like years and years and you don't use them and you don't access them in that case okay and you want something that is very low cost and very durable so that is the reason why we use s3 glacier and s3 glacier deep archive so there is a separate section for aws s3 glacier which is not included in the s3 console you have to access it separately to make use of it and you can reliably store uh, any amount of data at cost that are competitive with or cheaper than on-premise solutions so to keep the cost low s3 glacier provides three retrieval options that range from a few minutes to hours and retrieval option here means how fast do you want to access the data and based on that the cost will vary so it is designed for the durability of 11 9 percent of objects across multiple availability zone and it is designed for 99.99 percent .99 availability over a given year 
S3 provides a API or put API to directly upload uh, objects to your S3. S3 also provides a lifecycle management for automatic migration of the objects. So this is how the S3 Glacier class works. Let's move on. So S3 Glacier Deep Archive is Amazon S3's lowest cost storage class and supports long term retention and digital preservation for data that may be accessed once or twice in a year. And the use cases are it is designed for customers, particularly those in highly regulated industries such as financial services, healthcare and public sectors that retain data sets for seven to 10 years or longer to meet regulatory compliance requirements. Okay. And uh, S3 Glacier Deep Archive complements Amazon S3 Glacier, which is ideal for archives uh, where data is regularly retrieved and some other data may be needed in minutes. All objects stored in S3 Glacier Deep Archive are replicated and stored across at least three geographically dispersed availability zones protected by 11-9% of durability and can be restored within 12 hours. So this is the basic idea of S3 to have an archive based storage and this is one of the lowest cost storage options. So S3, when we talk about the lowest cost storage options or archival options, so we can talk about S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Okay, so I hope it was clear. Let's move on. So this is the performance comparison that we have here. So as we see, we have listed all the options that we have, like the, all the options of storage classes that we have here. If we see here one by one, the options that we have here are for the design for durability. So it has 11 nines, 11 nines, 11 nines. So all of the options that we have here provide us durability of 11 nines. So now when you see the design for availability, you have like except for intelligent tiering, standard IA and standard one zone IA, all the other storage classes like Glacier, Glacier Deep Archive and standard provide 99.9%. And S3 intelligent tiering provides 99.9%, S3 standard IA also provides 99.9% and S3 one zone IA provides 99.5%. So the biggest difference here you can see here when it comes to availability zone is basically for one zone IA which actually uh, stores data in one availability zone and all the others store at least in a minimum of three and minimum capacity charge per object is like 128 kb for standard ia and for one zone ia it is 128 kb and glacier it is 40 kb and deep archive also it is 40 kb so what it means is the minimum capacity actually you have to pay is for object size of 128 kb okay so there is a 30 days constraint for S3 intelligent tiering, standard IA and one zone IA and that goes beyond uh, 30 days for uh, S3 Glacier which is of 90 days, a huge 180 days for uh, Glacier Deep Archive. So when we talk about retrieval fees, um, other than standard and intelligent tiering, all the other storage classes have a per GB retrieval price. So when we talk about first byte latency, so it is the retrieval time that it can take, it's like milliseconds for these four. But when we talk about uh, Glacier, it can take several minutes or hours and uh, for Glacier Deep Archive, it will surely take more than one hour. Okay, and for storage time that you have, all of the storage types are object based and the lifecycle transition that is yes for all of them because we can transition them. Okay, so now let's talk about how S3 handles object transition and how the object lifecycle policy affects your object. So what happens here is you can add rules in an S3 lifecycle configuration to tell AWS S3 to transition objects from one AWS S3 storage class to another. Okay, so it's like, let's suppose, um, as I already mentioned here, uh, that if a user has stored data in S3 standard and has its lifecycle policy set to 30 days, and you have selected the option for it to be moved to S3 standard IA, then automatically when your data reaches 30 days, it will automatically transition to that storage class. And this is basically done by the lifecycle management policy. So there are two points mentioned here in the documentation as well. So when you know that your object are infrequently accessed, you might transition them to S3 standard IA storage class, or you might want to archive objects that you don't need to access in real time to the S3 Glacier storage class. Okay, so when you use S3 lifecycle configuration, you can define rules to transition objects from one storage class to another to save to save on storage cost. And Amazon S3 supports a waterfall model for transition between storage classes. So let's see the visualization here and see from which storage class we can transition to which other storage classes and which we cannot. Okay. So these are the storage classes that we have here. And the first point that you notice here is so S3 standard or reduced redundancy storage class can transition to any other storage class in its life cycle. Okay, so it can transition to standard IA or intelligent tiering or one zone IA, S3 Glacier or S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Okay, so next thing that we have here is 
एस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड आई है सो एस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड आई कैन ट्रांजिशन टू एस थ्री इंटेलिजेंट टेयरिंग वन जोन आई है ग्लेशियर एंड डीप आर कैफ द नेक्स्ट वन दैट वी हैव हेयर इज इंटेलिजेंट टेयरिंग कैन ट्रांजिशन टू वन जोन आई है ग्लेशियर एंड डीप आर कैफ ओके सो दिस इज बेसिकली द रूल ऑफ ट्रांजिशनिंग सो एज आई ऑलरेडी मैंशन हेयर यू कैन ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग लाइक वी कैन ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम द एस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड स्टोरेज क्लास टू एनी अदर स्टोरेज क्लास एंड द सेकंड पॉइंट दैट वी हैव हेयर इज लाइक यू कैन ट्रांजिशन एनी स्टोरेज क्लास टू द एस थ्री ग्लेशियर और ग्लेशियर डी पार्क आइव स्टोरेज क्लासेस एंड यू कैन ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम एस थ्री स्टैंडर्ड आई ए स्टोरेज क्लास टू द एस थ्री इंटेलिजेंट टेयरिंग और एस थ्री वन जोन आई ए and you can transition from s3 intelligent tearing storage class to the s3 one zone ia storage class and also you can transition from s3 glacier storage class to the s3 deep archive storage class okay so here we have mentioned like s3 glacier to the s3 glacier deep archive okay so now let's see what we can't transition to okay you cannot transition from any storage class to the s3 standard storage or reduce redundancy class okay so you can see here in the pattern as well none of the arrows are actually bidirectional uh, or moving towards s3 standard so we cannot transition to s3 standard storage class okay and you cannot transition from s3 intelligent tearing storage class to the s3 infrequent access storage class okay here also you cannot transition from here and you cannot transition from s3 one zone ia storage class to the s3 standard ia or s3 intelligent tearing storage classes okay so these are the basic fundamentals of transitioning objects so i will reiterate it once again so s3 standard can transition to any of the storage classes s3 standard ia can transition to intelligent tearing one zone ia glacier and deep archive and intelligent tearing can transition to one zone ia glacier and deep archive and glacier can transition to deep archive but there is no bidirectional you cannot transition back okay to s3 standard so i hope it was clear let's move on so as i have mentioned the table here so you can read the table like transition from storage class to the storage class and what is the impact of having larger object transition and what is the impact of having smaller objects than 128 kb so if you transition from a storage class that is s3 standard or s3 standard ia to intelligent tearing if you transition larger object there is a cost benefit but if you transition smaller objects that are less than 128 kb it is not that cost effective and the second point that we have here is if you transition from a storage class like s3 standard to s3 ia or one zone ia there is a cost benefit when you transfer larger objects and there is not so much of cost benefit when you transfer objects that are smaller than 128 kb okay so this is basic idea of telling that what are the price differences between or the what is the cost benefits that you have okay while transitioning so that you can make your decisions better while transitioning objects so let's discuss on the condition as what are the minimum days for transitioning from one storage class to another so what we have here is uh, before you transition objects from your s3 standard or standard ia storage classes to standard ia or s3 one zone ia you must store them at least 30 days in the s3 standard storage class the reason behind this is you cannot create a life cycle rule to transition objects to standard ia storage class one day after you have created them okay and amazon s3 doesn't transition objects within the first 30 days because newer objects are often accessed more frequently and in turn are deleted sooner than which is suitable for s3 standard ia or one zone ia storage so it will not be as cost effective like if suppose you are going to transition something and you are already accessing it it doesn't make sense to have it uh, transition to ia or infrequently accessed and if you are transitioning non current objects which are basically not the latest version present in your version enabled bucket you can transition only objects that are at least 30 days non current to the standard ia or standard one zone ia so non current here means that it's not the latest version okay so here as well the s3 intelligent tearing or standard ia or standard one zone ia storage classes have a minimum requirement of 30 days storage charge so what it means here is if even if you store it for 29 days you have to pay the whole 30 days price okay so let's check what happens when your object comes to its end of life and let's make some effort in understanding object expiration using amazon s3 life cycle So when your object reaches its lifetime, Amazon S3 queues it for removal and removes it asynchronously. And of course, as it is asynchronous, there might be a delay between the expiration date and the date at which Amazon S3 removes the object. And to find out when an object is scheduled to expire, use the head object or the get object API operations. Okay. And remember, you will not be charged for the storage time associated with an object that has expired. 
Now let's quickly check the cost impact for each storage class. Okay, so you have the bucket and you have the storage classes. So here, if you delete the object before that is less than 30 days, you're charged for 30 days. And for intelligent tiering as well, if you delete it less than 30 days, you will be charged for 30 days. For one zone IA also, it is the same 30 days, you will be charged for 30 days itself. And uh, for Glacier, it is like if you delete them less than 90 days, you will be charged for 90 days. And for Deep Archive, if you delete them before 180 days, you will be charged for 180 days itself. Okay, so let's move on.